Hello again. Wanted to talk with you all about uh, more artifact analysis and distribution analyses, but this time want to talk about artifact uh, distributions that we're able to um, uh, generate from the units that we excavate. And in particular, um, some of the larger scale excavations that we've done through the years uh, with a, one of the most really spectacular ones we've done is in, in the South Yard. And um, for the South Yard, what I wanna do in, in, this, in this module is um, go over um, uh, what is involved in uh, analyzing these distribution analyses and um, I'm going to share, start this PowerPoint right here. Yeah, and use the example of the South Yard, where we done, did extensive excavations over several seasons to generate just a whole, uh, just reams and reams of data. But what's important about this is, you know, in so many cases, what you need to, just like what we talked about with the shovel test pit data, one of the most important aspects of interpreting this kind of data is knowing what buildings, fence lines, how a little bit about the a landscape organization to, in order to interpret what the artifact distributions are. And of course, what we're getting out of the artifact distributions is what human behavior was going on in these areas. And in the case of this, the area you're looking at on the screen right here, this is the South Yard, the quarters for house slaves at the main house. And this is, this is a shot taken in 2008 when we were just beginning to make some, some of the really more important discoveries in the South Yard. The, the, you'll recognize the insurance map over to the right, which shows these two buildings, the two duplexes in their correct position. Remember that this insurance map was off by about 20 feet. And where we located these duplexes were about 20 feet to the, to the west in this location right here. And these are these chimney bases you can see here. And then in 2011, what we did is we, we excavated this entire area. We had the trees cut down, the uh, cedar of Lebanon, or the, um, the uh, Spanish fir and the Nordman fir. And then we opened up this entire area over the season. So you can see in April of 2011, we had just uncovered the stone foundation for the, um, the southeast duplex with its stone chimney base exposed the stone foundation along with this brick path that postdated the structure in the 1840s. After all these buildings were taken down, they used all the rubble to build a path through this, through what then was a lawn, what used to be the South Yard. And then in 2000 and um, in, in June and July, we started to excavate the other building, the Southwest duplex. And by the time you get into the fall, we had excavated this entire area and really, you know, just from the features alone, had figure out, figured out so much about this space. So from these piers here and here, and the one over here, we're able to figure out where the buildings were. In this case, this being the Southwest duplex, this one being the Southeast duplex, this one having a brick chimney in the middle, this one having a stone chimney base in the middle. We had figured out the position of this po porch where these post holes, and um, is, this will be an important thing to look at with the distributions of artifacts, because it seems that there are some artifacts that were underneath the porch. And that indicated that this was a porch that where the floor was raised up off the ground. And then down in this area, you've got all these utilities down here. You've got a water line trench that this water, wooden water pipe runs down through this low area into a sump right in that area. And then we've got the bar barbecue trench for all of the barbecues that would happen out on the back lawn uh, with the, uh, the Madisons and, and their guests. And what we discovered about this space is, you know, we were able to understand that this was the yard area in here, but it wasn't until we started looking at the artifact distributions that some of the organization of activities really became clear. So for example, I'm gonna skip over to some of the ceramics here. For the ceramics, here you can see, here's the broken ceramics and where they were distributed. Um, you've got, you know, this area in here that where there's a low amount of ceramics, these lighter colors are, you know, between zero and three uh, grams of ceramics. And then when you get into this downslope in, in this lower area, your ceramic concentrations pick up quite a bit. 
And then over in this area, you know, right beside the Southwest duplex, maybe where there's another porch, you've got another concentration here, but then this beautiful concentration right here that's below the porch in this area. And then when you look at the bones, it's pretty much the same thing. You've got a high concentration in this area, this concentration on the corner right over here. And then um, in both of the ceramics and the bone distributions, you can see where there's a concentration between this building and the fence. And what we're, we, have, we have not completely excavated this area. We're thinking that this, tra that this area in here was a clean yard in this location as well. So with the ceramics and the bone, what you've got is a picture of how this area was used when these buildings were standing and trash was being deposited. So it's a, it shows how the, how the, you know, where the clean swept yard, uh, clay, the swept clay yards are located. For window glass and then also for nails, what this indicates is that, you know, and of course there's many ways to interpret this. These, the window glass and the nails could be from when the site was being occupied and where, you know, broken window glass and, and uh, nails that were being discarded were being thrown. Or it could be that when these buildings were taken down, that's where the lion's share of these nails and window glass is coming from. And so it's a matter of comparing what we had with the, with the ceramic and the, um, and, the, and the bone that gives us an indication of, you know, if you've got ceramic and bone in these areas, but not inside the building, and then with the window glass, for example, this, this distribution right here, you get more window glass underneath the building, for example, here, and then also in this area, it might indicate that, you know, this window glass is either from when the building was being built, or more likely when the building was taken down, and then you get you know, distributions underneath the building from the building being disassembled. And then the, the same with the, uh, with the nails as well. You can see a little bit of this here, but it's really striking with the window glass. So again, you know, how we're, in, we're able to interpret so much of this data is if we didn't have any idea where the buildings were located, it'd be pretty difficult to interpret uh, a lot of this data that we have. But with the buildings in place, then all of a sudden we can look for, you know, where artifacts are distributing where the structure actually sits. And in this case, with the building being right here, the porch being here, and then the yard area being in here, it would probably be pretty hard to get window glass way under the building when the building was being occupied. Um, but uh, part of this, you know, is once you get these kind of trash distributions, it would probably be good to go back and look and see how the glass, window glass in this pile differentiates itself from the window glass in this pile. Is it the same color window glass? Are they different size shirts? What this art of these artifact distributions is begin to have us ask questions, but some of the broader uh, patterns that you can decipher, you know, just in general are, you know, areas where it's not all just about where the trash is, it's also where the trash isn't. So you know, for so much of this, for the window glass, and then also for the nails, and then also for the ceramics and the bone, you get very little in this area right in here, going between ceramics, glass, nails. And so what I wanna have you all do is for the, class, for the, uh, the exercise for artifact distributions, I'm gonna have you all take these maps and knowing what you know about this site, you know, where the buildings are, where the fence line is, where the potential yard area is on this upslope area, how you would interpret all this data. You know, how would you take this, these assemblages of window glass, nails, ceramics, and bone and interpret them to tell the story of what kind, what kind of activities these artifact deposits represent about, the, um, about this space. And with answering the questions, don't feel you have to write, you know, just like a two or three sentences for each um, for each each question is all you need to do. Uh, but you know, pick some of these these uh, trash concentrations or some of these areas where there's not much trash, and try to you know make some educated interpretations about what these might represent. And then even ask you know what kind of questions you have of the data 
if you're able to explore the data. So this is everything from you know the bone. Are there different types of bone in each of these different piles of trash that are in this area? And for example, with the ceramics, what are the men's between what what ceramic sherds men between this pile and this pile? And what would that represent if they did? So um, anyways, take a stab at interpreting this data and uh, look forward to uh, what you all uh, what you all come up with.